What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TW Motorsports, and today, well, we have some issues with the new daily driver. So I introduced this vehicle, um, I don't know if it was the last video or the video before that. This is my new daily driver after selling the crew cab. And uh, I discussed what it was, kind of how I bought it and whatnot, but I also talked about there's some issues, right? So, you know, when I bought this thing, they said there was a computer problem. The computer problem was that it goes into um, reduced power mode, which is a common problem with these. Like I, I told you in that video, I haven't had too many of those. My Suburban did it, but that, I think that's only ones that I've had do it. And a pretty common issue. But what I did do is it did do it that morning that I filmed that video. And once it warmed up, it seemed to be fine. And so that leads me to believe it's a throttle body issue. But I did go ahead and make some ground. So you can see I made a new ground. I cleaned this all off, this tab. Uh, I guess it's a common problem with these things. However, mine doesn't do it when I hit a bump. It does it just when it's cold in the morning. So that makes me think it's got to be a throttle body. Uh, once the thing gets warm, it, it doesn't do it. But either way, I did make, I cleaned this ground off. I went, I made a new ground to go from here over to the uh, module that controls the throttle body. So I've got it grounded there. I came off that with another wire to go to the other side, ground there. And then I came off of that and went to this guy here. So you can see I loomed it all up, it looks factory. I figure it can't hurt, right? So additional grounds, it can't hurt anything. I cleaned every one of those posts off. Well, this morning I came out and same situation. Uh, it's got the reduced power. I limped this thing. Uh, from my house to work, which is about 35 miles and guys, I don't recommend that it is a huge pain uh, While it will get up to like if you're going down a hill, it'll get up to like 55 60 miles an hour It doesn't seem like it wants to go into fourth gear when you when it's doing that it Drives great when it's not uh, but it doesn't like it doesn't want to shift real great It obviously when you're coming up a hill it slows down to like 40 you just don't have any control and so I, I'm gonna replace the throttle body, but Here's the deal, the throttle body's already been replaced. You can see it's pretty shiny. I'm gonna take, before I just go out and buy a brand new GM throttle body, I'm going to rob the one off this because it's an electronic throttle body. This motor came out of an, I think an 04 actually, so same year, but any 03 and up drive-by wire throttle body should work. Uh, we know this one's good. We don't have any issues with this. Doesn't matter if it's cold, hot, it's set outside in the cold, not had any problems. So before I go out and buy a new GM throttle body, which this one is not, this is a cheaper aftermarket replacement and they've been known to be bad out of the box. So before that happens, I'm gonna take this one off, move it out of the way. We're gonna rob the one off the 54. And then if tomorrow morning, it's supposed to be really cold tonight, I'm gonna let it set outside. If tomorrow morning um, we don't have that issue, I'm gonna safely assume that that was the problem. I'm gonna order a new throttle body, but today, we're gonna take this off. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm going to, what's gonna be involved in doing that. And uh, so let's get started. I'm gonna try to hook you guys up here on uh, my new GoPro mount. I've got my hood light up. Uh, we'll try to hook you guys up here and uh, see if we can get this thing off. So you probably don't have to, but I'm gonna take an eight millimeter and just get this guy out of the way. It just makes life easier on you. And I'm not gonna show you guys me taking it off the other car because I mean, you may or may not have a 54 Chevy with a 5.3 in it. If you do have a 54 Chevy, a 5.3 is a great motor to have in it. Let me tell you that. But we'll get this thing out of the way, set it to the side. And let's go get a flathead screwdriver because I doubt it's the same. Well, what's, what are the odds? I don't think eight millimeters really the specific size that's supposed to fit this, but it just happens to, so we're gonna use it. I don't think I'll get that lucky over here. Oh, maybe I will. This box is not setting in here well. My plan, guys, is the, the 06 and up trucks, um, they got electric fans. And so I actually have a set of electric fans setting over there I think eventually we'll do so once we've undone both those clamps this should just unplug like that original harness 
everything looks good all the pins look good sometimes people change the harnesses and um, they don't do it the correct way or they pin it out wrong but we should have there's two coolant lines that go through the bottom of these and so i am going to unhook those but before i do that i'm going to release this there's two or three 10 millimeters that loosens this throttle body up so i'm going to go grab a 10 we'll get this loose and then we'll grab a pair of pliers and get this coolant bypass or coolant passover piece out. I brought a magnet over here just in case. Although nothing seems to be magnetic. As I said guys, 10 millimeter. Holy cow, they really got that on there. And you can tell this thing is brand new. It is shiny. But I just, I'm telling you guys, my assumption is this is the problem. If I don't drop this, it'll be a miracle. To me, this is over tightened. You can tell it's got a new gasket in there. Let's see if we can get it off of here. Uh, they put a they put a hose clamp on one side. Normally you would have a um, a clamp that you could get off with this guy, but they put a different kind of hose clamp on there. So I'm gonna have to go get a flathead screwdriver and take the clamp off. But there's two lines: one that runs out of the um, intake or right in front of the intake here, up into this side of the throttle body, and then you have another one that comes off the top of the radiator, generally into the other side of the throttle body. It's kind of a, like a heating system. A lot of times guys bypass it. They say it gains power. I don't know about that, but let me go get the clamp loose and we'll get this old one out of the way. Well, it's a good thing I put, um, there's some paper or this, there's some uh, cardboard under this because this thing leaked quite a bit of coolant here, more so than I would have thought. I'd really like to keep this up a little higher maybe kind of cut down on what comes out of it. Part of it, I guess. I've got the other side unhooked. So that's it. I can tell you guys that it looks cheap. It's a Dorman. Looks pretty clean in here though. But you can see what I'm talking about on the bottom side here. You've got a coolant passage. And like I said, they say that heats up the throttle body, but I don't know. Either way though, let's go, uh, I'm gonna go snag the one off the other. I won't show you guys that. And uh, then we'll get it over here and see if we can get it on. So here's what we know. This one worked on the car. It makes a noise when I tilt it. I don't, I don't know what that's about. Let's go get the other one. Okay, it doesn't make a noise when I tilt it. Interesting. Okay. Don't know. Something's loose in there or what, but I did spray this off a little bit. Wipe the mating surface off a little bit. So what I'm going to do is while I'm putting it on, I'm going to try to get one of these hoses. The hose started down on the bottom. This thing I'm going to try. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Okay, never mind. I'm just going to put it on. And then I'm going to find you guys some actual torque specs. So we're not just hammering this thing down. Uh, give me a second. I'll go look them up. But we got our three uh, little nuts here. Let's see if we can get them snugged up. 
And then, like I said, I'll get you some torque specs. Uh, make sure, though, that you do put, you know, your coolant hoses back on. I am going to do that. I thought maybe I could sneak them on while I was putting it in, but that isn't happening. I bet this is very, very minimum as far as torque specs goes. Might even be inch pounds. One of those hoses on. The other one on. All right. We'll get those snug down as well. Try to put this thing back in its holder. Eighty nine inch pounds, guys. And I can tell you without a doubt, it was tighter than that. I'm gonna have to tighten these up a little further by hand. 89 inch pounds is not very much. I mean, that manifold is essentially plastic. So if you over tighten, you'll crack it. I did get the coolant lines tightened up already. So now let's get the intake back into place. We could go ahead and hook up our wiring here. Where did it go? There it is. Hook up our wiring. And look, when we first start this thing up, I have a feeling it's going to rev quite a ways. Generally they do until they learn they're idle. We'll see. Make sure that you get over the throttle body. There's no gaps in the bottom. You don't want any unmetered air coming through there. Let's snug this back down. This needs a good cleaning under here, that's for sure. I don't love cleaning under the hoods of my daily drivers since they see rain and dust and dirt and everything else. We may do a little cleaning under it though. So I'm gonna get these tightened up and then we will put the intake cover back on. And I'm gonna go in the truck, we'll start it up and see what happens. I've got my HP tuners cable out here because what I've been doing, uh, I found out today that if I get the truck warm and I reset the codes like real time while the car's running, uh, I was able to get it to run halfway decent, at least to get me home, a, well, not get me home, but I had to go somewhere else when I got home to get me down the road a little bit quicker. When I reset it, it, it started working. So, uh, but either way, let's go, uh, let's put the cover on and let's go inside and see what happens. Actually guys, one other thing I'm gonna do while I'm putting the cover on, I'm gonna unhook the battery and let it relearn the idle. So I can generally do that for my computer, but I should have unhooked the battery while I was doing this whole thing. I didn't even think about that, but that would wipe everything out and start anew. So I am gonna do that, let it set for about 10 minutes while I'm finishing up putting this on. So it's been about 10 minutes. Let's hook this thing back up and 
see if it screams when I start it. I remember when I replaced the one on my um, Suburban, it was really loud. Like went up to like 3,000 RPMs, which I, you know, I don't love to do when the um, when the car's cold. But let's give it a shot here and see what happens. Look, it reset the language. That's weird. What's up with that? So just so you guys know, if you hold down the trip, get to English, it goes back to English. I mean, it's idling. I think it'll take a little bit to learn the idle, but here's what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm going to um, pull this thing out. We're gonna drive it to work tomorrow. Like I said, I'm gonna let it set out overnight, and then I will update you guys on whether it worked or not. So if it does work, um, then we know that that's you know, obviously the issue, but we also, you know, we have to figure out, do we wanna buy a new one? Do we leave this one on and buy a new one for the 54? Um, or do we swap? I, I think it makes more sense to just leave this one on buy a new GM one for the 54 I think that would probably make the most sense, but either way Let me uh, get this thing outside let it set overnight and I'll check back with you guys um, tomorrow night At This point it's been a couple days and knock on wood no issues this far, okay, so Started up. I've let it set overnight a couple times. It's been cold. I've let it set at work and whatnot outside No issues with it starting any idling problems any of that reduced power. So I Look, I'm gonna tentatively say that it's fixed at this point I I really think guys that those aftermarket throttle bodies are garbage I just if you're going to replace one especially on GM now it may not be the same for every company but on a GM vehicle that is drive-by wire, I think that your best bet is to buy a GM throttle body. I've just seen too many instances where they're bad out of the box. And um, that goes for like the 2007 and up as well. I specifically, when I did the Suburban, bought a GM throttle body. So uh, basically what that means is, I think I'm just gonna leave this throttle body on here and I'm gonna buy a new GM one for the 54 and uh, put it on. That way we're not taking this one off, putting the new one on, swapping that one back. There's just less work involved to do it that way. This one's working, I'm gonna leave it. The other thing it did was I had a service brake booster issue and this has the um, hydro boost on it. So it doesn't have your normal uh, brake booster. It's got the boost that's uh, brake booster that's driven by the power steering. And I I'm kind of like back and forth. I, I don't really care for one over the other, I guess. The 54, uh, the guy did tell me that he had a brake booster on it and he switched to that hydro boost and it made a huge difference. So the 54 also has a hydro boost on it, uh, but I've had them without it. Like my green truck doesn't have hydro boost and it seems to stop great. I mean, but either way, a lot of times if it doesn't see the right amount of vacuum, you get that error um, is service brake booster error. So when I reset everything, when I unplug the computer, uh, apparently that reset it and obviously we haven't had any issues with it idling so I'm imagining um, that was the cause of that light as well I didn't show you guys that but I did want to tell you about that but either way um, we've got that accomplished so now I can you know drive it more than 40 miles an hour to work and back I literally drove it one day like I told you guys um, 40 miles an hour and that isn't fun in a 60 mile an hour zone but either way I've got some more stuff playing on this just to kind of I'm not gonna like do every video on this but I do have those wheels and tires like I showed you guys in the original video. I want to go ahead and get those on because I've got one of these that's a little bit out of balance. And so on the highway, it, it is kind of bumpy. And uh, to be honest with you, these tires, uh, they're not, I mean, they're in okay shape. But I'd rather, I bought a new set of tires, like I said, for those wheels that I bought. So I want to get those on. I think when I do that, I'll probably do the... Um, I'll probably debadge it at the same time. So check out that video guys next on this. That is my plan anyway. And then let me know in the comments if you think I should take the roof rack off. I know I've done that in the past. I don't know whether I want to do it or not. Um, but 
maybe I will. Either way, guys, if you did enjoy this video, please like always smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are not subscribed, please go down there, hit the subscribe button. Of course, ring the bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we do on this thing next.